Hello guys, today I'm back at the place where I shot my first YouTube video for this channel at Trinity Bellwoods Park, downtown Toronto. Around three years ago, I was here at the same park, sitting at the same bench and we talked about all those people who should not think of coming to Canada. Is Canada for everyone? Maybe not. And of course, in almost all of 2020 and 2021, the pandemic has ruled our lives and the new normal is a lot different from what it used to be. So in this video, we'll discuss if those points are still valid, who all people should not think of immigrating to Canada, whether you're thinking of pursuing your higher studies in Canada or you're thinking of getting the permanent residency. We will talk about it in this video and it's going to be very interesting. So if you're interested, stay tuned. And guys, don't worry, this video is not to demotivate or discourage anyone. Canada is a great country. But yes, I don't want to talk only about the rosy picture, only the good lifestyle, everything is good here in Canada. We want to talk about some realities as well. So talking about it is also important. So without any further ado, let's start discussing this as well. The very first point is about the travel and of course during this pandemic this point is amplified a lot. If you're homesick and maybe you're from India or somewhere around India, it's very difficult to commute especially after you know all of the what is happening, all the travel restrictions, the quarantine rules. We know all the countries are imposing uh, you know different travel bans on each other especially on India these days. Then we have different variants coming in. We have, uh, you know, spikes in some countries, some other countries. You know, a lot of things have actually been going on since last, uh, you know, few months and we all know about it. I don't have to repeat it. Earlier, it was difficult to travel to India anyways. And now it is like getting impossible to travel during this pandemic. So if you're homesick, let's say you have uh, to meet your grandparents who cannot travel to Canada. Let's say if you have, uh, you know, some work going on in your home country, let's say India and you have to travel often, Canada might not be the place for you. First of all, because of this difficulty in traveling, traveling sometimes takes, you know, 24 hours, even during the normal days without COVID. So it is very difficult. And of course, about the charges for the flight tickets as well. They are very expensive and especially after this, uh, you know, pandemic, they have gone off the charts. You know, people who are traveling during the flight ban are paying more than 2 lakh rupees just to travel in the economy class from India to Canada. One way travel. It's so difficult. I know things will improve. Things will not stay the same and we're talking about a long run. But still, it is very difficult. Just think about it. If traveling uh, to and fro from India to Canada costs around $2,000 uh, for a person. If you're a family of uh, three people or maybe if your parents are also there, then it would be roughly around ten to twelve thousand dollars every year, and it gets very difficult for people to manage that. I know I have friends who tell me that I am not going to India because I don't have the money to do that. So yes, if you are one of those people who are quite homesick or who think that they can visit uh, India quite often, trust me, it is going to be very difficult. And Canada might not be the right choice for you. Maybe UK or somewhere in Europe or maybe Dubai. You can think all of that if you want to move and or maybe settle abroad. Well, okay, today in this video, I want to talk to the international students, all those people who want to come to Canada to pursue their higher education. Guys, there's a trend which I've been seeing for quite a few years. Many students come here and they show off their swanky cars and their luxurious lifestyles. Maybe in TikTok, maybe in uh, YouTube, in Facebook or any other social media. And some of your friends might be doing it as well. But the reality is actually quite different from that. The reality is that students, when they come here, they have to struggle a lot. Especially if you're not from a very rich financial background, then you'll have to struggle a lot and you have to be prepared for that. I talked to one of the students in person, he had a beautiful car, better than mine. I asked him that, how did you manage to buy this car first of all and how do you maintain it? Because in Ontario, you have to pay, of course, the EMI and apart from that, you have to pay a hefty insurance every month as well. So I asked him, how do you actually manage all of that being an international student? He told me that he works 
around 12 to 14 hours every day however it's not allowed it's not legal but he does that it's not hidden from anyone that people do work for cash jobs as well so he was working part time somewhere and full time somewhere else and uh, walking around 12 to 14 hours i asked him how is it actually possible for you to do it along with your studies he said he has to do that i was actually feeling sad for him because he told me he works 12 to 14 hours every day 7 hours a week and his health was like he was taller than me but he was skinny probably 50 to 55 kgs and had dark circles you know all around his eyes so i asked him why do you do that he said you know i have to show this to my friends and all of that i understand different people have different thinking different beliefs but of course that is my thinking many people choose to do that if you are one of those people who don't belong to a rich family who don't have a very great financial background if you're thinking of uh, paying your tuition fees on your own if you're thinking of uh, you know taking care of your daily household activities on your own and then you're thinking that you'll have a luxurious lifestyle soon after landing in Canada as an international student trust me until unless you do some illegal uh, work it's not possible so all those people who think that coming to Canada for their higher studies you'll have a swanky lifestyle a luxurious car all of that trust me it's not fair sometimes people do some illegal activities so if that's your motive of coming to Canada I would suggest don't come to Canada okay next I want to talk to all of those people who want to immigrate to Canada as the permanent resident of course you're uh, sitting in your home country let's say India again I am from India so I take India's reference all the time so if you're thinking of uh, you know coming to Canada and getting a job uh, very soon things are changing almost every month because you see these waves are coming of course there's a lot of unemployment in Canada as well so of course the companies will hire all those people who have some Canadian experience yes Canadian experience is one thing which matters here a lot you'll hear a lot about Canadian experience uh, we'll talk about it in some other video but yes that is a challenge people will tell you update your LinkedIn get some connections well, it's a new country you don't know anyone here uh, maybe some people here but not many people then it gets very difficult for you to get new connections uh, who are able to refer you maintain that kind of uh, you know relationship with them that they're able to refer you to their company it gets very difficult especially during covid you know all the countries actually faced um, unemployment problem uh, during the covid time when there's lockdown and cases are rising again every now and then in every country we see we are seeing waves lockdowns even after the vaccination is going at a great rate in these western countries and Canada is no exception you get to struggle a lot when you search for your first job getting the first job is actually a challenge and I'm talking about it because I've talked to so many different people of course uh, you no know, they keep telling me about their stories and I love hearing that People tell me about their struggles, how they've struggled to get their first job. Yes, it is difficult, so you should definitely accept it. You would have heard it in many videos, people telling you about, uh, you know, actually going for a survival job until you get your main job, your core job. Maybe uh, you were working as a manager there, then now you got to work as a, you know, as an associate here in the new company or maybe as a, an executive, not as a manager what happens it things change a lot when you actually try to face that reality some people are not able to accept it some people are like i want the same job the same designation sometimes it's not possible especially during these times sometimes people leave canada immigrants come to canada as the permanent resident i'm talking about pre covid times and they leave canada as well because their expectations were something different altogether they were expecting that uh, you know they're great at their work they'll come here and they'll immediately get a top level job but sometimes that's not possible i'm not trying to discourage you yes many people get the jobs eventually most of the permanent residents who come here eventually settle down here so my point is that you should be prepared in your mind when you're coming here that you have to face some struggles in the initial days let it be a permanent resident or even an international student so all those people who think that you know life would be pretty rosy so that is all possible but what is important is that you realize the fact that you are going to face a lot of struggle after coming here in finding your first job if you think that your lifestyle in your home country is already great you're earning good there and you don't want to start your life from scratch up to the top level again 
then Canada might not be the right place for you because yes, initial days would be full of struggle. You have to be prepared for that. All right now again, I want to talk to all those uh, people who want to pursue their higher education in Canada. People think that PR, the permanent residency, would be served to you on a plate. You land here, you complete your studies, do some work, and you'll get the PR. No, it's not like that way. I have seen so many examples: people struggling badly to get the PR, people struggling badly to get their work permits extended so that they can actually get some work experience and they can actually apply for their PR. It's definitely not easy. Yes, in 2021, we have seen uh, many steps taken from the Canadian government that uh, you know they are promoting all those people who have been working in Canada for a long time. Uh, there have been many programs, there have been many draws like that, but that's not a usual scenario. Things are changing and yes, hopefully they would be uh, conducting the all program draws once again and then uh, things will get back to the you know pre-COVID uh, times. First of all, the biggest challenge is to get the job for the right NOC code which makes you eligible for the express entry programs or for the different provincial programs. Sometimes it's very difficult to get that job. You pass out from your college and you get jobs, maybe Tim Hortons, maybe McDonald's or some factories and those jobs are not valid to apply for the permanent residency. They're not for the NOC 0 or A level or a B level sometimes. So it gets very difficult for you to actually, uh, you know, get a job that is eligible for applying the permanent residency through the express entry system. I hear people saying this many times that if you studies complete, you will get PR. To mili but trust me guys, it is not that easy and many people actually struggle to get the PR or even become eligible to apply for the permanent residency. So if you're one of them who thinks that uh, getting the PR would be a piece of cake for you after you complete your studies, think twice. Okay guys, now the last point which is probably the most important for me actually, doing the daily course. Trust me, it is very difficult. All those people who think that doing the daily course like uh, doing the dishes or uh, you know cleaning your home regularly is easy. Do you remember all the times when uh, the lockdown was there? The first lockdown was there. You were not at all habitual of doing that when there was no maids, no servants. You had to do all the work by your own. You had to do your own dishes. You had to clean your own, um, you know, your own home. You had to clean your car. You had to, um, you know, wash your clothes. All the things you have to do on your own. And that life we have to do here daily, even if there's any COVID, any pandemic, we have to do here daily because of course you cannot afford to have servants doing all that stuff for you. Yes, there would be uh, some tools like a dishwasher that can help you actually uh, you know, clean your dishes. There can be tools like uh, some robots which can clean your homes. I have all of that, but still it is difficult. You have to do a lot of work despite having all those uh, you know, swanky equipments, the robots which clean your home. You have to do a lot of work and which is a big deal. If you own a home, maybe you have to clean the snow, you have to clean uh, the um, leaves when they fell off uh, in the fall season which is next month i have to start doing that and then of course there are other things as well uh, which you have to take care so trust me it is very difficult if you're one of those people who is uh, you know quite laid off who thinks that you know everything should be done for him uh, by someone maybe your uh, mother has actually pampered you a lot trust me it's not easy it's not easy and i'm saying this i'm saying this from almost four years of experience i've been doing this and still i believe that it's not easy so if you're one of those who think that life would be easy once you get a job once you have a car once you have a home it will still not be easy and you'll have a daily struggles once you start living your lovely life here in canada and then the eyes will be opened, you'll say, oh, nobody told me about it. But now I'm telling you, so don't complain at least to me that I didn't tell you about it. All right, so thanks a lot, guys, for watching this video. The point of this video was not to discourage or demotivate anyone, as I told you in the starting of this video. It was just tell you the reality. Everything is not rosy. Yes, Canada is a great country. It is a dream country for many people just like me. But life here is also not easy and you will actually face these kind of struggles anywhere around the world, not just Canada, but yes, 
during the pandemic and especially after the pandemic life has changed a lot and I wanted to tell you the actual picture. So thanks a lot for watching this video. I know it has been long enough so I'll wrap this video now. Uh, but do not forget to click the subscribe button and put your comments down in the comment section below if you have already been in Canada do you agree with what I have to say and also if you haven't been to Canada I just hope I didn't discourage you but I tried to tell you the real picture just let me know your feedback in the comment section below and also you know about the new channel dreamers abroad that's the Hindi vlogging channel if you haven't subscribed that channel I regularly upload content some fun content over there do not forget to subscribe that channel as well